This week I'm going to be machining a custom aluminum part for my telescope. I got into astronomy a few years back and was really interested in taking pictures through my telescope with my camera. Uh, unfortunately the adapter that I bought for my camera does not allow the camera body to get close enough to the secondary mirror of the telescope. So I can't pull focus and what I'm left with is some pretty poor image quality. So I need to be able to get that camera a bit closer or a bit deeper into the telescope body to get the focus right. So I decided that I'd remake this adapter ring right here and enlarge that central hole so that I can fit the camera a little bit deeper into the telescope body and hopefully be able to pull focus. So I'm just taking a few dimensions of the cylindrical portion that inserts into the telescope and then the diameter of that flange that holds it in place. And I'll just recreate these in V-carve and cut them out. So just working with the normal 6x8 handy bot area and I'm going to be using a 3 quarter inch piece of aluminum that I found uh, on the floor in the shop somewhere. So first I'll draw the central hole that holds the camera adapter and the diameter I measured on that was one and a quarter inches. And I'll just place that anywhere in the work area and to be sure that it's centered, I will use the alignment tools to center the circle that I just drew in the exact center of my, my work area. So next I just have to draw in the two inch segment, which is the portion that inserts into the telescope, and then finally the 2.2 inch flange that I measured on the outside of the adapter ring. I realize here that I actually made a mistake um, the size of the camera adapter that I want to insert is not an inch and a quarter. I want it to actually be uh, 1.385 is what I measured on the camera adapter. So what I'll do is go into the uh, set size function in vCarve, selecting that circle and typing in the correct dimensions and it will enlarge it to the size that I want. I figured while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and add a flat to the outside of the cylindrical portion that will hopefully help it be held more securely in the telescope by the set screw that holds it. So I just draw a line in the center of the circle and then I move that line out to 0.95 uh, away from the center which will give me a nice size flat on the side of my cylindrical section. And then I just adjust the size of the, of the line segment so that it fits uh, nicely along that edge there. And then I can use the trimming tool to come in and trim away the excess vector uh, on the shape that I want to create right here. And then finally I have to just join these two vectors together using the uh, close join vector tool. So now I've got my basic shapes laid out. Uh, to start machining them, I'm going to pocket out the center first. And I've actually created a couple of custom bits in my tool library in vCarve that I call aluminum roughing and finishing bits. And they are regular bits that I just have changed the uh, pass depth and the feed rate on. So the roughing bit will take passes of 10 thousandths of an inch per pass and it will move pretty quickly at 3 inches per second. And that will help me keep the bit from getting too hot because the router spins really fast and a hot bit tends to gum up with aluminum and cause bad cut quality. I'm also going to ramp my plunge moves on this pocketing tool path to hopefully also decrease the load on the bit and improve the edge finish on my part. Then for the outer area, I'm just going to do a profile tool path rather than a pocketing tool path. And once again, select my roughing aluminum uh, bit and for this one I'm only going to be going down half an inch. The other thing that I'm going to do is offset this first cut by three thousandths of an inch outward. So that first cut will happen in multiple passes offset from the actual vector and then I'll come back with my finishing toolpath which moves it, cuts at full depth and it moves much more slowly, a quarter inch per second. And that will be done on, on the actual line and will be my final cut. And I find that that usually gives me a better cut quality. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for that last uh, flange as well, uh, offset by three thousandths. And I'm also going to add some tabs that will hold this in place so that it doesn't pop out of the material once it's finished being cut. 
this flange doesn't really rest inside anything, so I'm not too concerned about getting precise uh, dimensions on this outer ring here. And so the tabs won't be a problem just to saw and maybe do a little bit of sanding to get rid of them. So you can see there in the 2D preview of your toolpath uh, what the tabs are going to look like. And then I'll go ahead and also preview in 3D just to make sure that everything looks correct. And sometimes these can take a long time to render when you're doing multiple passes like I am with the aluminum, but everything looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and save that out and get my material out of the garage. So this is kind of a, a big chunk of leftover aluminum. Uh, from the looks of it, actually, it was used to prototype the parts for the very first model of the HandyBot, which was released uh, almost three years ago now. So there's still a little bit of usable area left on this piece of aluminum. And the nice thing is I don't really have to hold it down at all or find a way to secure it. I'm just going to set the HandyBot on top of it and center it over that kind of nice uh, uh, open area in the middle where I can cut this part out. So I'm going to first zero out the tool. Um, this is especially important when you're cutting out something something hard like aluminum. You know, if for some reason your bit breaks or there's another problem, you want to be able to restart your tool path and not have to locate that central point again. So by zeroing the machine out, I'm able to have a consistent starting location. So I send the tool to uh, the three, four coordinates so that I can make sure that I'm lined up over that area that I want to cut. And then I'll swap out my V-bit for a single flute, or it's actually called an O-flute uh, quarter-inch bit. And you want as few flutes as possible because that also will help keep the temperature down on the tool. So the way that I zero out the tool when I'm doing something hard like aluminum is I'll send the tool down to Z0 and then I'll just drop the router until the bit hits the material and then tighten it down again. I find that's a lot easier than trying to use the ZZ air plate um, because the material is hard enough that it doesn't really leave a mark. So all plugged in, uh, vacuum turned on, and ready to start up the toolpath. So I'm going to be kind of jumping around during this cut just to speed things up. So it's going to look like it's happening really fast, but it actually uh, is making multiple shallow passes. So you can see here, that's about the time that it takes to make one pass. And if a pass is 10 thousandths of an inch, that means that a three-quarter inch piece of material is going to have 75 passes. That may sound like a lot, but really, once you get down to it, uh, it only takes maybe uh, 20 minutes for me to cut this part out. Um, because the tool is moving so fast, it works pretty well. So this is that second pass, uh, or that second cut, where I'm cutting into the outer ring of my adapter. You can see there it's stepping down by 10 pounds every time it goes around that circle. And then finally, cutting out that last flange, uh, leaving those tabs behind. So let's pull it out and see how he did. Uh, this, whoever used this piece of aluminum last, sprayed a bunch of adhesive onto the bottom of it. And it's kind of like created this gummy film on the bottom of the material. So I'm having to use this deburring tool to get that last little onion skin of aluminum off, but it's it's basically the thickness of aluminum foil and it tears out really easily, so I'm able to clean it up pretty pretty quickly. So not too big of a deal. But looking at this, I'm not really satisfied with the edge quality on it. I think that we could do a lot better. Um, I'm going to go out in the shed and see if I can find some some kind of lubricant and uh, maybe a couple of clamps just to provide a little bit of extra pressure to the HandyBot and hold it down a little bit tighter in case the vibration was moving it around at all. So I did manage to find a can of WD-40, uh, which which will do good, good enough. Uh, spraying that on the bit will help keep it cool. And a couple of uh, quick clamps that I can hold down the frame of the HandyBot with just to make sure that it doesn't move and so I don't have to worry about it. So let's try again. A little bit of WD-40 sprayed on the surface and uh, another really important thing here is to have good dust collection uh, because especially when you get some kind of lubricant in there the chips are going to want to stick together and you want to clear those chips out uh, right away. Here I've removed the dust but just to give you an idea of what the cut looks like when it's not being uh, enclosed by that shroud and how it clears material. But you can see the chips are flying everywhere now, so 
really need to put that back on there to keep the mess down. So every once in a while when the tool lifts up between passes, I'll stick the WD-40 nozzle in there and give it a couple of sprays just to um, you know, keep, things, keep things cool. Um, this is especially important uh, when I'm doing the finishing pass, which is what you see me doing here. The tool's moving a lot more slowly and it's taking off these very long kind of wispy chips that like to get caught in things. So I always make sure to give it a lot of lubricant when it's doing that finishing pass. So looking better already this time. It'll require a little bit more cleanup because of all the liquid on it. I just run it under some tap water. And the second try turned out a lot better. So now I'm ready to go ahead and drill the hole for my set screw. I actually just used the uh, MDF base that comes with the HandyBot, uh, which you can actually flip over and attach these blocks, which are actually included with the tool, and create kind of a jig. And in that jig, I mounted a cheap vise that I found on Amazon for about 30 bucks, and just drilled a couple of holes with the HandyBot and then bolted the vise in place and use that for all of my side machining operations. So here I'm just stepping the eighth inch cutter, this is another O-flute cutter, stepping that down until it's resting right on the edge of the material that I want to cut on the flange. And this time I'm just going to draw the circle that I want to cut out at the zero, zero origin in V-carve. Um, it's going to be a three and a half millimeter hole, that's the size that I need to tap it for a metric uh, M4 screw. And drawing that at zero, zero just means that wherever I want to cut the hole, I need to just zero the tool out at that position and then hit go. So it makes it a little bit simpler than trying to figure out where the tool is going to go when I start the cut. And I'm going to use a roughing eighth inch bit, which is going to make 10,000 passes. And it's going to sort of peck its way down through the aluminum. That helps it clear chips and once again keeps the, the life of the bit lasting a little bit longer. And I'm going to speed this up here just to sort of zip through it. And it's going to do all 50 passes. I think I told it to go down by half an inch, so that'll be 50 passes that it pecks through. And it should go well beyond the bottom of the material. And just just make sure that I get all the way through. As you can see, it's broken through right there. And now that I've got that done, uh, just move the tool out of the way. I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it in the vise and tap it with an M4 tap. Uh, this, the process of tapping actually takes a lot longer than the milling of the hole, so I'll speed this up a little bit as well. Um, just general knowledge for people using a tap for the first time, you want to kind of back it out a little bit just to break up the chips that, especially in aluminum, tend to sort of accumulate at the tip of the tap and can uh, jam things up and cause you to break the tap if you're not careful. Uh, one other tool that I've really enjoyed lately is this uh, sort of counter sink deburring tool and you can just sort of run that through a hole and it'll give a little bit of a chamfer on the edges of your hole and will be provide a good lead in for your screw. So uh, just checking to make sure the screw that I'm using fits. This is one of the regular screws that we use when building the HandyBot. And now it seems to fit okay in the telescope and I should be able to stick the camera adapter a bit deeper in there now, just like that. So all looks well. Uh, now it's time to take it outside and try it out. So it's a pretty warm night out and there's a lot of mosquitoes so I'm trying to hurry. But I was able to get a few pictures of the uh, Alberia, which is a double star in the constellation Cygnus. There's Mars, uh, which was really beautiful that night, really clear. And then of course my favorite uh, is Saturn. Uh, really great uh, shadow on the rings there that night. So I hope that you've enjoyed this project, and I hope that you'll take some time to check out some of our other projects. Um, got a lot of other videos where we do some aluminum milling and even some circuit board cutting. And be sure to check out the HandyBot store if you get a chance to.